And now, Mystery Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Come in. What's that? Yes, it is rather dark in here. You see, we never turn on the lights. We don't need any. At the Radio Mystery Theater, all we illuminate is your imagination. We fill it full of ghostly radiations, mysterious emanations, the eerie glow of terrifying images. And now we have a most unusual image for you. The image of a doll. Yes, I said doll. And a very pretty one, too. Long, silky blonde hair. Innocent, round, blue eyes. A charming dress of taffeta and lace. This is the central character of the story you're about to hear. Of course, you're asking, what makes a doll an image of fear and horror? You've got to find it, Jimmy. You've got to get that doll away from him. Okay, honey, okay. Give us a little time. I don't have any time. If something happens to that doll, I'll die. Our mystery drama, The Doll, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Joanne Linville and Ross Martin. Our story begins in the classroom of a small co-educational university. Not a very unusual setting. But today, these young men and women are hearing an unusual lecture. The guest speaker is Professor Eric Douglas. And the subject of his address is written in chalk on the blackboard. Let's step a little closer and see what it says. Homeopathic magic. Ancient and modern. Let's be quiet and listen. For thousands of years, people believed they could injure or destroy their enemy by injuring or destroying an image of him. And so they made likenesses in cloth, in wood, in clay. The ancient Egyptians used wax. The wizards would take a drop of a man's blood, clippings from his hair or parings of his nails, and knead them into a wax figure. You mean like a voodoo doll, Professor? A uh, voodoo belongs to the modern era, but the idea is exactly the same. Once the doll was made in this fashion, the victim was at the mercy of the sorcerer. So, you see, the doll is really man's oldest toy and perhaps his deadliest. You mean that stuff really works? Well, that is the strangest part of all. Sometimes it works very well. You've got to be kidding, Professor. Young lady, I wonder if you'd like to help me with a little experiment. Me, Professor? Yes. Will you come up front, please? Now, uh, just for the uh, the fun of it, uh, shall we uh, shall we make a doll? Huh? All right. Now let's see. What shall we use? Um, now this little towel will do fine. I'll just try not to make the head. Uh, yeah. And now let's dress it up a little. Can you help me? How? Well, with some part of you. A, um, a hair from your head, perhaps. <laughs> uh, now, uh, how about uh, something you own? Uh, that ring, maybe. May I borrow that? Well, I... Uh, well, yeah, thank you. Now, we'll put that around the neck. And voila. We have an instant voodoo doll. Fascinating, isn't it? To know that... The doll is meant to be a representation of you? Now, look at it. I'm looking. Yeah, well, keep looking. Now, don't take your eyes off of it. You can almost see your face in the cloth, can't you? It's almost as if the doll is you. Whatever happens to the doll happens to you. You. The doll. You. The doll. Sharing one body between you. 
One life, one destiny. I, I still think it's silly. All right. And let's see what happens when I take this letter knife. What are you going to do? Nothing. I'm merely going to plunge this knife into a meaningless piece of cloth. No, don't! <laughs> Prudence. Prudence. You called me professor? Yes. I uh, want to know what you think of this record. Fred Cartwright sent it to me. Claims it's an authentic Dumbala ritual march. I could not say, professor. Hmm. I think it was probably recorded on Hollywood Boulevard. Well, that's enough of that. Well, what's become of Laura? Isn't she home yet? She's just arrived, sir. She's in the living room. Oh. Laura, darling. I didn't hear the door. You're very late. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. I, uh... The match wasn't over until six. It went five sets. And, uh, who won? You know you don't care the first thing about tennis. Ah, uh, that's a young man's game. Not for old birds like me. Oh, come on, stop that. You're far from old... Oh, Prudence, I hope I didn't spoil your dinner. It's all right, Miss Fletcher. I'll go see to it now. Eric, why won't she ever call me Laura? Oh, it's just her way. You know how it is in the islands. A servant's place is a servant's place. Tradition. Mm, it's more than that. It's resentment. You've got your father's sensitivity. Harry was always thinking that people resented him. Maybe he had good reason. He wasn't very popular among his colleagues. Your father was a renegade. That's why. It's one thing to investigate primitive cultures. That's an anthropologist's job. But to spend your life among them, to raise your child among them... No, I never complain. <laughs> well, you managed to turn out pretty happily. But you're uh, still half-savage, of course. Am I? You can't fool me, Laura. You're still a child of voodoo, just like Prudence. No, don't be silly, Eric. I know you all right. When the full moon rises and the drums start to beat in the jungle and the serpent god Dumbala raises his hooded head... Eric, stop it. What's the matter? I'm... I'm sorry. I have that... that awful headache. Again? Well, come on, let's take care of it. No, don't bother. I'll be all right in a moment. Best time to stop it is early. Right now. You listen to Dr. Douglas here, and we'll get rid of that pain in two minutes. Come on now. Lie back. All right. Now, oh, just relax. Just remember how we've done this before. Yes. I remember. That's right. Now, shut your eyes, Laura. Think of your mind as a large, empty cavern. And in the cavern, you hear my voice. Very faint, as if I'm speaking to you from far, far away. Yes. You feel at peace, relaxed, happy. Your head is clear. Your pain is gone. Yes. It's gone. Oh, you're happy now, Laura. You're happy to be here with me. With me, my darling. Aren't you? Yes. I'm happy. You love me, Laura, don't you? Not in the way you loved your father. You love me as a man. Now say it, darling. Say, I love you, Eric. I love you. Say my name, Laura. My name. I love you, Jimmy. What is the matter with you, Prudence? I'm sorry, Professor. The dish fell from my hand. What is it? 
What happened? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, my dear. You're fine. You're just fine. Prudence just dropped something. I came Mm. to tell you that dinner is ready. Well, so you had a good tennis game, did you? Was it uh, mixed doubles? It was, as a matter of fact. Oh, who was your partner? Not someone named Jimmy, by any chance? Why, yes. How did you know? Oh, well, no mystery. You spoke his name while you were hypnotized. Uh, who is Jimmy? Well, his full name is Jimmy Collins. You known him long? Papa. Three months. Three months? Well, you never mentioned him before. Oh, I'm sure I did. But I'd love for you to meet him, Eric. I'm sure you two would get along. What's he do for a living besides mixed doubles? He's in Wall Street. Well, well. Maybe you've started choosing your friends more carefully, darling. I'm glad to see that. But, uh, just the same. Eric, I wish you would stop talking to me like a scolding father. I am not your father. I was talking to you as a friend. I'm sorry. Do you wish dessert now, Professor? Uh, no. No, Prudence, no dessert. Um, gotta stay in trim. <laughs> Who knows? I might take up tennis yet. Laura, I tell you what. Why don't you bring this Jimmy around? I'd love to meet him. <laughs> No, I'm afraid I don't know much about Haiti, Professor Burnside. I've never been to the island. Oh, but of course Laura has told you of her life there. Oh, yes, she's told me all about it. In fact, you spent some time there yourself, didn't you? Yes, a few years. That's where I met Laura and uh, her father, as a matter of fact. You can see that Eric brought back half the islands. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my uh, souvenirs, like uh, this thing, for instance. What is that? Looks a little tacky to me. Well, they call it an Oanga packet. It's a charm the voodoo men use for every purpose. Some good and some bad. We should throw out that awful thing, Eric. Well, it was a gift made for me by an old mamaloy in uh, Port-au-Prince. It's a protective charm, guaranteed to ward off the devil. And, of course, uh, Laura can tell you more about it. Laura's much more of an expert on voodoo than I am. You mean just because she was raised on the island? Well... It's an interesting primitive study, otherwise sheer nonsense, of course. Oh, well, uh, you shouldn't have said that. You've offended Laura dreadfully. Laura's Mm -hmm. a believer, you know. She played with voodoo dolls the way other children play with Chatty Cathy and Betsy Witsy. Harry, please (laughs) stop it. Ask her, Jimmy. Go ahead, ask her if that isn't so. Oh, I'd feel very foolish asking that question. Oh, Jimmy, of course it isn't so. Well, that's good to hear, frankly. I mean, it'd be a heck of a thing on our honeymoon, waking up and finding an Awanga bag in my slipper. Did you say honeymoon? Yes. Did Laura tell you? Laura and I are engaged. We're going to be married next week. <laughs> Professor. What do you want? It's late, Professor. After midnight. Leave me alone, Prudence. Go to bed. There is no chain strong enough to hold her. What did you say? The girl is not of your blood. Why do you struggle to keep her? Prudence, I can't lose her. You hear me? If I lose Laura, I die. No, Professor. Oh, you've got to help me. If you want me to live, you've got to help me. There is nothing anyone can do. There is. There is. There is is something that you can do. What is that? I've been thinking about it all night. Prudence, you can make a doll. Well, what have we here? A four-sided triangle? Professor Eric Burnside, young Laura Fletcher, Jimmy Collins, a servant named Coudance. Or is this going to turn out to be a five-sided triangle with the fifth member of the equation, a doll? 
We'll find out what Prudence can do to help the professor in his emotional dilemma when I return shortly with Act Two. What a... A week has passed since Laura Fletcher made her earth-shaking announcement to Professor Eric Douglas. The announcement which turned the professor's world completely upside down. But for a man who has looked into the future and found it bleak and empty, Eric seems like a happy man at the moment as he listens to the sound of the Dambala ceremony and waits for Laura Fletcher to enter the room. Eric? I'm here. Laura. Well, let me stop this racket. Well, don't you look lovely. Hmm. And don't you look well. Eric, I can't tell you how good it is to see you smiling. Well, I've got something to smile at, all right. Myself. I uh, don't know what came over me that night, Laura. I, I just was not myself. I couldn't let you run off and get married without my blessing. And a suitable present, of course. A present? Eric, you shouldn't have. You've always admired this ivory charm, and I, uh, I want you to have it. You and Jimmy. Oh, Eric. It's beautiful. It must be priceless. Well, it's not as priceless as our friendship. I, I wouldn't want anything to happen to that. Oh, thank you. So much. Jimmy will be as thrilled with it as I am. I think we should talk before you go away, darling. I think we should talk about, uh, your father. What about him? I have to ask you this, Laura. Whether or not you've ever told your fiancé the full story. I, uh, I've told him quite a lot. Including the way it ended for him? Don't talk about it now, Eric. Please. You know, I still blame myself. I knew that Harry wasn't right in the head. I, uh, I could see the signs. And I shouldn't have let it go as far as I did. Please, Eric. You know that I, I cannot bear to remember that time. I know, I know. You were only 14, but you witnessed it all. His mad delusions. Don't. Oh, my head. Laura, what is it? It's a... The pain again? Yes. Oh, Poor darling here. Come on, lean back. It happens every time. I remember my father. Shh. Now, now, now. Don't talk. Just lean back. Relax. Close your eyes. Yes. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Now breathe deeply, darling. Deeply. Now you remember how we do this together. How we make the pain disappear. How you clear your mind of everything but the sound of my voice. Yes. You can't hear anything but me now, Laura. Just my voice echoing in your mind. You're asleep now. You're so deeply asleep that you won't waken until I tell you. You won't know anything but what you hear me say. Do you understand? Yes. I understand. That's it, my darling. Deep. 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 Prudence? Prudence? Yes, Professor. I'm here. Bring it to me. No, Professor, this is wrong. Bring me the box, Prudence. Very well. Here. Yes. Yes, Prudence, a beautiful doll. That's a beautiful likeness. <laughs> Laura? Laura? Open your eyes. Yes. What do you see, Laura? I see. I see. Oh! 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 Oh!
darling. There, there, there. It's all right. Don't cry anymore. What happened? What happened to me? Nothing, nothing at all. You were asleep and you had a bad dream. Asleep? Yes. You had one of your headaches, do you remember? And I put you under hypnosis, and then I decided to let you sleep it off. You seem so tired. I feel so strange. I know. The truth is... Well, I'm not sure that you're well. What do you mean? When do you and Jimmy plan to get married? This weekend. I can't help wondering if that's wise. What do you... What do you mean? I wonder if you're well enough. You seem so run down and the headaches are obviously worse. It took a long, long time to make you lose the pain. Eric. Jimmy and I are getting married. This Saturday. We're driving to Crompton Lane. And we're getting married by the Justice of the Peace. Nothing is going to change that. Nothing. You sure you feel okay, Laura? Yes, I'm all right. Hardly said a word since we started out. Well, a girl doesn't run off to get married every day of her life. I need to time to reflect. Haven't changed your mind, I hope. No, I haven't changed my mind. Well, what's that cold sweat all about? It's not another one of your headaches, is it? No. It's just nerves. It's bridal jitters. Now, maybe... Maybe if you didn't drive so fast. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm in a hurry. Rip the bell off the door, young man. I'm sorry about that. Uh, my name is Collins. I called this morning about the wedding. Oh, the judge is inside. He's near deaf as a post, so better make the I do's good and loud. <laughs> I intend to. Oh, <clears throat> come in. Come on, come, come, come in, folks. I'm a lucky witness. Fine. Uh, young lady, you stand uh, here. Next to you, young man. Honey, are you all right? Huh? Oh, yes, I, I'm fine. You sure you wouldn't like a glass of water? Oh, no. No, thank you. Steady, honey. It only hurts for a minute. <laughs> Dearly beloved, <clears throat> we're gathered together here in the sight of God in the face of this company, trying to gather this man what? and this woman, holy matrimony, Wait, what's wrong? which is an honorable estate instituted by God. Just a little shortness of breath. Signifying unto us, Mr. Laura. Union, Elizabeth Church Christ and his church. Oh, it's which a holy estate Christ adorned. Oh, and Jimmy. Oh, yes. What's the friend. matter? Fine, what's the matter? I, what? I've got this, this awful pain. This terrible pain. Raining. Oh, Jimmy. I'm so sorry. Okay, now, come on. Don't be sorry. Just take it easy, that's all. That's what the doctor said. I do feel better now. Much better. Oh, who would have thought the day would turn out like this? Stuck in a cheap motel across the street from the Justice of the Peace. We're not even married yet. And it'd be deliciously sinful if it weren't for this miserable room. Jimmy. What is it? Oh, God. Jimmy. Help me. What's the matter, honey? Is the pain again? No. No, it's something else. Jimmy, I, I have to get up. Oh, come on, I stay have in to get bed, up. darling. You heard the doctor. I have to. I have to move. Laura. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. God. Lord, you hit the wall. I can't stop myself. I can't tell you how sorry I am, Jimmy, but I uh, also can't say that I'm surprised. Well, what do you mean? 
Well, my field is anthropology, but I'm not a complete stranger to the psychological sciences. In my opinion, uh, Laura's problem is the result of a conflict, the difference between two worlds, the world of everyday reality and the dark world of superstition. No matter how much she laughs about it now, Laura grew up believing in devils and zombies and voodoo dolls. Oh, come on, I just can't believe that. Well, that's why I feel so strongly that Laura, well, she just isn't ready for marriage. Well, here, let me show you something. What is that? It's a doll. Now, as you can see, it's a uh, very good likeness of Laura. Uh, Prudence is an artist of sorts. Your servant made this? Yes. It's her hobby. It's a sort of sculpture. But um, what do you suppose Laura did when she saw this doll? She screamed. She was horrified. She thought it was a voodoo effigy. And whatever happened to the doll would happen to her. No, Professor, I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't buy that explanation. Yes, I was afraid that you wouldn't. Laura's too sensible. This is all such childish would stuff. Would you care to... Test the theory? Test it? Huh. Yeah. Well, would you be willing to conduct a little experiment? It might. Depends on what it is. All right, I'll tell you. At exactly nine o'clock this evening, I will take our little doll here and bring it to that fireplace. And I'll hold the doll over the flames, high enough so that it won't be scorched, but low enough so that it can feel the heat. Oh, the dolls don't feel... No, no. Dolls don't. But Laura is another matter. You tell her what I'm doing. Tell her about the experiment. And then see how she reacts. I'm sorry, I don't like politics, Professor. I just want you to know what you're up against, Jimmy. Now remember, exactly nine o'clock. <laughs> You sometimes, Jimmy. I mean, I know you saw Eric. You told me you were going to. All right, I saw him. Mom? He just told me a lot of nonsense, that's all. About me? And my father? About you and voodoo dolls. What did he say exactly? Laura, why did he have that doll made? What doll? You know... The one that looks like you. What are you... What are you talking about? You said you saw it, didn't you? No. I never saw any such thing, Jimmy. He must have been joking. He must have been putting you on. I saw reason. the thing, darling. You what? I saw the doll. It was about this big and obviously hand-carved and... Well, it did look like you, Laura. Same long blonde hair, blue eyes, very much like you. That woman knows how to carve. Woman? You mean Prudence? The servant? Yes, that's what he said. That she made the doll that you actually think... Laura, you can't believe in voodoo. Not really. Oh, dear God. Then that explains it. That explains everything. What? The pain. In my chest, it was like a... Like the thrust of a needle. Oh, now, come on. And the way I lost control as if I did... Like I was being flung about like a like a doll. It was exactly like a helpless doll. Oh, now, cut that out. You know that isn't so. You're just convincing yourself of this nonsense. It's all in your mind. But what else explains it to me? What else? As long as he has that doll, he has me. Shh. Oh, honey, please. That's crazy. You've got to find it, Jimmy. You've got to get that doll away from okay, me. Okay, okay, honey. Just... Give us a little time. I don't have any time. If something happens to that doll, I'll die. No, Laura, you can't really believe that. I want you to prove that isn't true, and you can tonight. What do you mean? That nutty friend of yours said he was going to try a little experiment tonight, just to prove the point to me. Well, I want you to disprove it. What sort of experiment? He said that at exactly nine o'clock he was going to take the doll and bring it to the fireplace. Oh, no. He said he was going to hold it over the flames high enough for the doll to feel the heat. And he said you'd feel it, too. Oh, Lord, Jimmy. Well, what time is it? It's uh, 20 of 9. We'll get out of here. No, no. 
Well, go back to my place and we will prove no. him wrong, darling. Prove him a liar. Oh, God. I'm getting warm. I'm getting terribly warm, Jimmy. That's your imagination. No, but it... Oh, honey, he said nine o... Wait a minute. The watch isn't going. Jimmy, look. That clock on the wall, it is not... Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, Jimmy, it's happening. It's really happening. No, no, don't. don't. You've got to fight this. It's only suggestion. It's hypnosis. He's killing me. He is burning me alive. Honey, no, darling, no. Stop it, Jimmy. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Yes, the mind is a powerful weapon. And when it's turned against ourselves, it's the most dangerous weapon on earth. Can Laura Fletcher find a way to stop her own mind from tormenting her and possibly ending her life? At least she isn't alone in the struggle. We'll find out what Laura and Jimmy can do about the deadly doll that menaces her when I return shortly with Act Three. Professor Douglas's experiment has succeeded only too well. And it's also succeeded in convincing Jimmy Collins that something has to be done to save the sanity and even the life of the woman he loves. And that the best place to be in would be the home of Eric Douglas, his servant Prudence, and the doll itself. Oh. Hello, Miss Fletcher. Hello, Prudence. Is Professor Douglas home? No, miss. He's gone. Gone where? On a lecture tour. He took the early morning train not half an hour ago. When do you expect him back? Not for days, he said. Prudence, I have to talk to you. Please let us in. Yes, miss. Prudence, when my fiancé was here the other day, the professor showed him a doll. A doll, miss? He said... You made it. I made no doll, miss. I saw it, Prudence. It was in a black cardboard box about this big. And he took it out of this brake front here. I know nothing of a doll, sir. All right. Suppose we look for ourselves. Please, sir. Jimmy, is it there? No, it's empty. Please. I cannot allow this. All right, where's the doll, Prudence? I don't know. Please, you have to help me, Prudence. You don't know what he's doing with that doll. He's making voodoo magic with it. Do you understand? I am a Christian, Miss Fletcher. You know what I'm talking about. He's putting a spell on me, Prudence. He's using that doll you made to make me do his bidding. He wants to stop me from marrying. He thinks only of your happiness, Miss. You are like his daughter. He is torturing me. Would a father torture his own child? You've got to help us find him, Prudence. You must know where he's staying. I'm sorry. I know nothing. All right. Then the least you can do is give him a message. You tell him for me, for both of us, that his game isn't going to work. That Laura and I are leaving too, and we're not coming back. He'll never see her again. Did you get that? No matter what he does, he'll never see her again. Did you get that? No matter what he does, he will never see Laura again. <laughs> Prudence? Prudence? Where are you? Here, Professor. Did you have a good tour? Yes. No. But I don't remember. It was endless. Seems like far more than three days. They were here, Professor. Who? Miss Fletcher and her young man. They came to see you and to find the doll. You didn't let them? No. It is still hidden. Good. The girl says you are torturing her. Only for her own good, Prudence. I swear that. This man Collins is wrong for her, and I had to prevent the marriage. Why, Professor? Because her father asked me to watch over her to protect her. That's why I asked you to make the doll, so that I could trick her into believing that I had some control over her. Nothing else would have worked. It was not a trick. Of course it was, Prudence. No, Professor. 
The doll was made because Dambala commands with her image, her hair, a drop of her blood. Now the girl and the doll have become sharers of the same soul. Prudence, you're slipping back into the jungle. Doll has no powers. Laura reacted only to suggestion. The doll is her. She is the doll. Only the sorcerer can break the spell. I'm tired, Prudence. I can't cope with mumbo-jumbo tonight. Professor, lift the spell from the doll. Oh, for heaven's sake. There is no such thing, Prudence. Call the girl. Tell her I will ask Dambala Uida to unchain her spirit from the doll. No. I will not do anything of the kind. Why? Because you don't want her to marry? That's right. Because you want her for yourself. What kind of talk is that? I'm more than twice her age. But you still want her. I have eyes. I have ears. I will call the girl. I will tell her that the doll is here. And that you will lift the spell from it. Stop that. Put that phone down. Now, you stay out of this, you hear me? I made the doll for you. Now I will unmake its evil. I told you to put that phone down. (laughs) Now stop. You're you're scratching my face. Look what you've done, you witch. You've drawn blood. I'm sorry. I didn't mean... You have meddled enough in my life. Now get out of here. I don't want to see your ugly face again. I want you out of here by tomorrow morning. Do you hear me? Yes, Professor. I heard you. A moment... Laura. Hello, Eric. You know Jimmy Collins, of course. What are you doing here? Sorry to be such early arrivals, Professor. We wanted to make sure you didn't go off to another uh, lecture this morning. I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Collins. Don't plan to stay long, Professor. Only until you give us that doll. The doll? That's right. (laughs) But for heaven's sake, you're... (laughs) You're really serious, aren't you? You really believe that doll has some mysterious powers. It doesn't matter, Eric. I'd just feel better if if you'd let me have it. I know it's here. How do you know that? Who told you? Prudence called me. Prudence? Yes, very late last night. She told us that the, the doll is in the hall closet. In a black box. She lied to you. Woman's gone crazy. I had to fire her. Want me to look in the closet, Professor? How dare you? I could have you arrested for what you're doing. Eric, please. We've been friends. Friends for such a a long time. That is a beautiful word, isn't it? Friends, almost as good a word as father. That is all I ever meant to you. Oh, Eric. Let's have the doll, Professor. Oh, yes, the doll. The voodoo doll. Mr. Collins, I think that you are as mad as she is. Maybe I am mad, Eric. But I am afraid of the doll. I can't help myself. So please, please let me have it. I'll give you one minute to lead us to the doll, Professor. Oh, and then what will you do? Pump me full of lead? And I'll find it myself. In the course of it, I might break quite a few things. Quite a few things in the process. Things you may value. All right, I will show you the doll. There. Is that what you're after? Uh, It does look like me. I think I... I think I remember seeing it once before, but it's it's as if it was in a dream. I'll take that, Professor. Stop right there. What? Now, suppose I didn't give you the doll. Suppose I smashed its head instead. Eric. All I have to do is smash the head against this wall. One sharp blow, and the head is broken. The skull caved in. The pretty blue eyes shut forever. Huh? Shall I, Laura? Eric, why are you doing this to me? You smashed my life, didn't you? You didn't care what happened to me? 
Oh, Eric, but I do care. You walked out with him. You left me for him. Well, here's what he... Uh, then... Oh! Uh, I you. Oh, you... Laura. Eric, what's the matter? Uh, Jimmy, what's the matter with him? My chest... Uh, chest? It's a heart attack. I think he's dead. Oh, oh my God. Are you sure? Look at his face. Oh, no. It's no sign of a pulse. He's gone, Laura. Oh, no. Oh, just like that. Must have been the excitement. No, it was not. Prudence. The spell is lifted, miss. When the sorcerer dies, the spell dies with him. What's that in her hand? Prudence, what are you doing with that knife? It was the only way, miss. Wait a minute. She's got something else, some some kind of doll. Prudence, you... You didn't... His skin and his blood from my fingernails. His curse from my lips and heart. Oh, Jimmy. How horrible. She killed him. Oh, no, no, Laura, no. It, it was a coronary. Only a coronary. I think. Well, personally, I don't think I'll ever trust a doll again. Not Raggedy Ann, or Betsy Wetsy, or even that paper doll they used to sing about. Of course, there's no question in my mind that Professor Douglas died of natural causes as opposed to supernatural. There's a great deal to be said for the power of suggestion, which, of course, is why you're about to hear the following suggestion. We hope that the story you just heard hasn't given you any ideas. That you're not all rushing out to the local toy store to buy up their supply of dolls in order to try some grisly experiments on your least loved ones. Take our word for it. It doesn't really work. But on the other hand, why do I have this sticking pain in my left shoulder? Our cast included Joanne Linville, Ross Martin, Virginia Gregg, and Carl Swenson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.